crawl spaces are one of those areas in the house that's easily overlooked. People just don't think about them and unfortunately, you know, the crawl space in most cases is underground so you've got a really high chance that you could have moisture in the soils around that crawl space and if there's a problem and you don't check on it periodically, um, things go unnoticed, you could end up having some structural issues, problems with mold, problems with rot. So it's actually a very, very critical part of the house and so part of this video series is going to explore a couple different options with crawl spaces, looking at a retrofit, looking at new construction. We're going to see some good things, we're going to see some bad things, but hopefully along the way it'll help give people a better idea as far as what's going on inside underneath the house. We're going to look at a couple of examples of uh, good construction where things have been done right. This first photo here shows a concrete block foundation. It's very typical of a lot of construction. It's been waterproofed on the outside and it's got four inches of rigid foam board on the outside. What that exterior insulation does is it keeps that concrete block that's in the photo a lot warmer so you're much less likely to attract condensation on those inside surfaces simply because they are warmer. The ground vapor barrier, 6 mil polyethylene plastic, it's been sealed all the way around the perimeter and it's also been sealed around those wiring penetrations where they come through the ground and enter the crawl space. This air sealing is very critical because it not only stops ground moisture from entering the crawl space, it also stops soil gases such as radon if you live in an area where that's a problem. All those rim joist bays have been sprayed with a high density polyurethane foam. It seals that area very well. You're preventing crawl space air from reaching that rim joist where it can essentially condense and cause problems with mold and rot. In the upper left, there's the HRV diffuser. This crawl space is part of the whole house mechanical ventilation system. It helps control humidity levels and also the crawl space stays a lot warmer when you've got that house air circulating through there. The second photo shows a crawl space that's been insulated from the inside. When you insulate a crawl space from the inside, it's very critical that you've got good air sealing so that any moist air that's in that crawl space can't reach the foundation walls where it can condense and lead to problems with mold and rot. So in this case, there's been four inches of high density spray in polyurethane foam. It's been sprayed on the walls, but not only the walls, it also carries all the way up into the joist bays and is sealed all the way around that entire rim joist area. In the back corner of this crawl space, there's a section of baseboard fin tube that's been extended down into the crawl space area so that provides extra heat. This crawl space also stays about as warm as the house. Once again, the air is warm, it's less likely to condense on cold surfaces. And the ground vapor barrier is continuous and well sealed all the way around the perimeter. It actually carries all the way over to where that spray foam has been applied to the foundation wall. The first video we're going to show is, uh, is an older home and it's got a crawl space that had some retrofit work done on it. They added some insulation to it. They solved some problems but they didn't solve all the problems and so we're going to look at some of those problem areas and we're also going to look at some of the good things that they did fix in the crawl space. People just don't think about it. When you move into a house what you see is your living space and so it's pretty easy not to think about what's under the floor. In wintertime when you see that moisture on the windows and you think, oh, it's coming from people or, you know, oh, the window's bad because it's a double pane window, it's not a triple pane and it's in Fairbanks, so of course it's going to get moisture. Well, you look at something like this where you've got these exposed soils and they're wet, you know, this could be your single biggest contributor to your moisture problem. All that moist air is going up through these plumbing stacks where the holes have been cut. So you've got literally probably 100 penetrations in this floor and every single one of them is a little chimney for that moist air to get into the house. Everywhere I'm looking I'm seeing damp soils um, in a couple spots around the edges. It looks like there's been some water pooling up over time. So this is definitely something that needs to be sealed tight to this guy. Um, ideally when they built it they would have put a scrap of plastic underneath and that would have made this ceiling a lot easier and a lot more positive. But even now, you could replace this plastic and seal it right to the concrete and do a lot better. I'm guessing this was a retrofit. This looks really clean and relatively new. And so 
the foam contractor came in and sprayed these walls, but he didn't remove the fiberglass that was in the joist base. He just sprayed a flash coat of foam over it, and we can see there's a hole here. And so, you know, it's working, but in a place where you've got a moisture problem and things maybe don't dry out as well, if you get any air leakage into this hole, you know, it's going to get cold. That air is going to go right through that fiberglass and condense on the back side of that wooden rim joist. And if that doesn't dry out fast enough, you could have a problem with mold and rot. The Fairbank City Building Department would require that there be fire protection to prevent this from ever catching on fire. The inspector would require that you either put sheet metal over this, sheet rock, plywood, fiberglass insulation, or for an irregular surface like this, um, you can talk to the local spray foam companies or go online and they have an intumescent paint that can be brushed on this and as long as it meets that fire rating, you know, that's another great way to fireproof this. Really good gutters. Um, everything's working really well on this roof till we get to right about here. And then it gets a little interesting because this guy clearly isn't draining into this drain pipe. Unfortunately, you know, the best time to waterproof a, a foundation like this is when the house is being built. The inside, it's covered with spray foam, so um, you can't do anything in there. But really, for waterproofing, it needs to be done on the outside here, and this needs to be covered. You know, on an older place, all of a sudden you've got sidewalks and things that are in the way. It gets a lot harder to waterproof it. Um, sometimes it's not economical to do so, so then you have to make sure that your gutters are working properly, that your ground is sloped away you know, and you try to minimize all those problems. And worst case is, you know, if you still have a problem with high groundwater or something like that, you may have to excavate this and waterproof it. The next video we're going to see is a video of new construction. The house is only about three years old. And so they built this crawl space right. They insulated it on the outside. It's very warm inside there. It's ventilated. Uh, the floor is well sealed, so we're going to do a walkthrough of a high performance crawl space that deals with moisture issues. It's got plenty of insulation, so there's some really good things to be seen in this upcoming video. We're going to go into the crawl space here in Jim's house. The access hatch is in a closet, that's where you find it a lot of times. It's out of the way, but still easy to get to. Got a little staircase, a little ladder leading down. This area is very well sealed, it's very well insulated, and it's ventilated. The concept here is to try to treat this space like a miniature basement. That's always the safest approach, is create a conditioned space that is essentially not that much different from the living space in a sense that it's heated, it's conditioned, it's got controlled humidity, and so you're limiting the problems you can have with moisture. Here we're looking at a, uh, a bearing pad for a, a beam that's holding up this floor. And what Jim did is he put six mil poly underneath this pad. And so this ran out to, we can see it here, all the way out around the perimeter. And the nice thing is that when you put the visqueen then over the gravel later, all you have to do is cut around this pad and you can seal with acoustical sealant and red tape and make a really good seal because you've got continuous sealing underneath the pad as well. That's a great idea. How thick is this here? Eight inches, it's you say? eight inches almost. There's a, of course, a treated plate sitting on top of the block, mm -hmm. and we put the floor joists on top of that and then had the guys come by and shoot the fo foam on the rims. So we got a nice seal there. So what we're doing is we've got a high insulative value and very good air sealing, so airflow from inside this crawl space doesn't reach any of that cold rim joist on the outside where you get a problem with condensation. The other vent comes in. It's pretty much over the top of the tank. We've got really good cross flow ventilation where we're bringing air in through that duct in the floor or in, in the corner behind the water tank, and it's, that air has to travel all the way to the exhaust duct across the entire crawl space, so you're getting really good air circulation, air mixing, and air exchange. So we've got really good air quality down here. Controls humidity, controls soils, gases. It's really the way to go. Nice big overhangs, continuous gutters all the way, running to downspouts. Downspouts go down and out, direct the water away. 
it's pretty easy for water if you've got a drainage problem, water basically to hit that frozen ground, find the path of least resistance. And if you've got some, you know, disturbed soil next to the foundation where they backfilled, maybe put in some piping or something, that water can real easily go down there and just collect and then force force its way into the crawl space. Everything starts out here. You know, if you've got good drainage and you've got water control out here, it really minimizes any potential for problems that you might have in that crawl space. So this is a great place to spend some money. So today we've seen a couple of examples of crawl spaces. Um, there have been some good things and some bad things, but uh, one of the main issues we want to stress is that the crawl space is an incredibly important part of the house and it's just as important as the living spaces and ideally your crawl space should be treated just like the living space. It should be warm, it should be well insulated, and it should have good mechanical ventilation. And if you have a warm, insulated, ventilated, well sealed crawl space, your chances of having problems are, are very, very small. The only other thing you want to keep in mind is that all the moisture problems in a house start from outside first. So. If you don't have gutters or good site drainage and you've got a water problem, if you can't fix it there, everything else that happens in the crawl space could be compromised. So start on the outside, look for those issues, deal with them there, and it'll really minimize what's happening inside that crawl space. If you've got a, problem in the pro a water problem in that crawl space and it goes unnoticed for a while, it can get very expensive, it can lead to health issues and expensive repairs.